George is a hard act to follow. <laughs> I didn't bring a cow with me today. <sighs> Darn. But it's a great pleasure to be here on the Wicca stage sharing it with this group of fantastic women. Isn't that part of the great pleasure of living here, huh? This clan of very intriguing women. I'm here to talk about Dharma. And what is that anyway? Well, like all ancient Sanskrit words, its meaning is diverse and varied. But uh, you could think of it as vocation, but that's pretty limited. My favorite definition is the place where your own deep gladness and the hunger of the world meet. My own road toward Dharma actually hasn't been quite as interesting as Georgia's, but <laughs> it's been confusing and uh, a bit tumultuous as it probably is for most of us, huh? Without any kind of roadmap or plan, I've worked as a public services librarian, a horticultural librarian, a garden columnist for the newspaper, written books. Now I have a blog, teach yoga, and own a yoga studio. There is a yoga pose that embodies this dharmic dilemma, when to stay put, when to move on, and I will show it to you. If you've seen um, photos of um, paintings of Lord Shiva, it's called the Dance of Shiva, or statues, you often see a rat underneath his beautifully articulated foot, right? Well, that rat is what you've outgrown, what you're ready to get rid of. I'm not sure it's a good idea to balance in front of all of you, but I'll try it. <laughs> So you root down with your foot. You keep your knee soft for buoyancy huh? and resilience. See, I can usually do that just fine. You extend your arms into this mudra of growth and change. And only, this rat is under your foot. huh? Only by stomping the rat, getting rid of what you've outgrown, are you going to be able to inhabit the pose, uh, move forward into growth and change, and breathe your way forward. So that's the dance of Shiva. The rat under my foot was a once beloved career at the University of Washington where I was hired in 1985 to start a horticulture library. And I worked there for almost two decades. But I grew tired of it over the years, particularly because just by luck and chance, I started writing for the newspaper, writing books. I enjoyed that. I really wanted to become a much better writer. I could leave the librarianship to somebody else. But I felt a great responsibility for that library. And also, they don't call universities big nipples for nothing. People hang on. It is really hard to, it's really hard to leave. Um, you get amazing benefits, huh? I had summers off to write. I had good vacations. And I had a certain sense of responsibility. And then everything changed in May of 2001 when eco-terrorists firebombed the library at the Center for Urban Horticulture. Maybe some of you remember that. Well, that was my library. They burned down Merrill Hall. A lot of the collection was destroyed. And my job changed overnight to dealing with FBI agents, state legislators, donors, raising money, again, for a library that I raised money for you know, two decades earlier, and also book conservators. And I more than ever wanted to leave, but was less able to, huh? That sense of responsibility and habit and security. And then a couple months after the bombing, I was down in um, Mexico teaching gardening at Rancho La Puerta. And my daughter, Katie, was with me. And we were taking classes from this guy who called himself a modern mystic. And his name was Rob Rabin. But for some reason, Katie and I called him Buzz Buzz for reasons that are lost to me now. <laughs> and we were taking classes from him. And he was sitting out on this lawn. You can see the weeping willow tree, huh? He was sitting below that. And we were walking up to class. And a woman from Seattle was there, and she walked along with us. And she asked me about the burning, and I was explaining to her what had happened. And we walk up, and you've got to picture this. Um, Buzz Buzz is sitting on this grass in a full lotus. He has his hands in this beautiful mudra of grace, wearing a white shirt, looking like a neo-Buddha, right? And he overheard what we were saying, and he said, uh, what happened, Val? And I said, well, eco-terrorists burned down the library that I manage. And he looked up at me and he said, well, what the fuck kind of sign do you need? <laughs> and uh, I asked Lynn. Lynn said I could say that. Um, <laughs> it's a direct quote. That makes all the difference, right? Anyway, that was the catalyst. And I knew I was going to leave that job. Um, <laughs> Not only had the universe sent me a very clear sign, but then it had been called out by Buzz Buzz when I ignored it, right? <laughs> and I stayed for about another year and left. And 
Ever since then, I've paid much more attention to synchronicities, um, to signs, to yearnings, to longings, to my own heart. And so I ask you to consider what rat, you know, might be under your foot, huh? What have you outgrown? What are you ready to get rid of? I know that I wouldn't be living in Langley today. I wouldn't be teaching yoga. I wouldn't be considering starting another book if I had not stomped on that rat of habit and security and moved on down the road toward Dharma. Thank you.